Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and I'm here to talk to you about the differences between the Leonie Dynamic Evo XL, the O11 Vision, and the standard Dynamic Evo. I want to show you some of the interesting highlights of these cases, because I've built in them in a variety of different ways, and I've used them personally for a while, so I want to talk about my experiences with them. And as you'll see, these are highly flexible cases with loads of different options in them for the most part. The Evo XL is particularly flexible, but the O11 Vision is perhaps perhaps an interesting option if you're a new builder or you have a mid-range or budget system that you want to put a simple setup into and not have to worry too much about. And you can see that with three glass panels, it gives you a really good view into the case to be able to see what you've built and be proud of it. I have used the standard Dynamic Evo for some time as my main machine, and I really liked it for a number of different reasons because it's quite compact and yet offers up loads of different flexibility in what you can do with it. That you can see it in two different setups here for example so i'm going to cover off some of the things between that the evo xl and the o11 vision which is undoubtedly a very good looking case but with far more limited options in what you can do with it versus the others and i think that's an important takeaway here if you're looking for a really flexible case that gives you loads of different build options then you probably want to go for the evo lineup because those two are much more flexible and adjustable and customizable in various ways. You can see that I have built in the Evo XL here, for example, in all sorts of ways. There's an upright GPU mounted, a top mounted 360 mil radiator with a push pull set up with six fans on it. I've used reverse flow fans in there as well, performance fans. You can also do obviously vertical GPU mounting, standard GPU mounting. And if you put it in the reverse build like this, for example, where the motherboard's upside down you can also have your graphics card upside down and you can see that you can put two fans at the rear it gives you all sorts of different options in the configuration of it and you will notice obviously it's a lot more spacious than the other two cases as well perhaps too spacious and some have commented for example how this looks empty with the setup that I've got so something to bear in mind there now the Evo XL allows you to mount your motherboard in top middle or bottom positions and you can see an ATX board here and when you do that that then opens up different possibilities in terms of what you can do with it for example in the bottom position you could put two 120 mil fans at the rear and still have plenty of room at the top or alternatively you could mount four 120 mil fans on the top which isn't actually listed in the specs but is possible and other highlights as well the evo xl also allows you to remove the support panel on the front so that you can then see into the case and have a more pleasing view of what's inside this is a nice addition but an optional one so i for example still leave my panel in place most of the time because if you're going to move your case around it gives you good support but if you want it you can have this view where you can see inside your build and it gives you a nicer aesthetic if aesthetics were important though the o11 vision might be the case for you because as you can see it's got three glass panels and no support bar down the front there so you can see straight into it you can also strip this case down and really take everything out when you're going about the build process and that's very flexible in all the different cases from lee and lee because they really do like this modular design that allows you to do things like this. The O11 Vision allows you to take the motherboard tray out, as does the Evo XL, which has some advantages because it means that you can also build your PC outside the case on the tray. And with the O11 Vision, that's so flexible that you can also put your 240 mil radiator on there as well and set that up before you've even put it into the case, which is pretty interesting. There are two different motherboard positions in the O11 Vision as well. High mode, which is the default setting and gives you access to the top and bottom of your motherboard with ease, with the ability to mount one 120 mil fan at the rear or low mode, which you can then do a bit more with because you can then mount two 120 mil fans at the rear or a 240 mil radiator, as you've seen. This does mean that you don't have as much space down the bottom for cables though. So alternatively, you could do a 360 mil radiator on the side or obviously perhaps air cooling with a CPU tower cooler, for example. But obviously with the glass panel on top, you're limited in where you're gonna put a 360 mil radiator. So it's not as flexible and perhaps the airflow is not as good 
as something like the Dynamic Evo XL. Now with the Evo XL, you've got loads of different options in there because you can obviously top mount your radiator, side mount it, you can put fans on the side, you can also do a push-pull setup either on the top or on the side, and you can see, you can customize it with 140 mil fans too. And because it's so big and spacious, that does lead to some gaps. But there are some other highlights to all of these cases. For example, you do get things included as standard, like an anti-sag bracket for your graphics card that you can see here with the Evo XL. You also have a similar anti-sag bracket with the O11 Vision. So that's a nice addition. And it's these little details that make the Lee and Lee cases shine in my mind because you have some are standard and then some are additional purchases. Things like the upright GPU bracket, for example, is an additional purchase, as is the vertical mount. But being dual chamber cases, you also have loads of space at the back, which means that you've got plenty of room for your cables. You'll see that the Evo XL even has things like the ability to mount a fan on your hard disk drive cage and still be able to shut the door at the rear with plenty of venting for good airflow there too. Now, this is the same across all of them in terms of that flexibility. The other thing that's nice is the removable fan tray. So the O11 Vision you can see here with a side mounted fan tray, which can be flipped around. So you can have it in two different directions. This fan tray obviously also doubles as a radiator mounting bracket too, if you want to. And because the flexibility of it and the space at the rear of the case, you can do push pull. So you can have fans on the rear here like this and then a radiator on the other side. And that's possible in all three cases. The 11 Vision is interesting in other ways because it has this bracket for the power supply unit, which mounts to the PSU and then to the case, but then puts the PSU outside your case in a little bit. So it juts out the back a little bit, but that means that the case can then hold a larger power supply than it should be able to being a smaller case but also if you're using a reasonably sized PSU like this 850 watt one your cables are then in a good position to route them through the various brackets in the case and they are adjustable you can see the brackets in here for example you can move them into various spots and that's the same on the Evo XL as well so plenty of space there and even if you end up with loads of cables you can still shut the door which also doubles as an SSD tray there hide things away and and easily put the rear panel on. I want to say that that's possible in the Evo XL and the Dynamic Evo 2. So I found that all three of them was really spacious in the rear and really easy to build in. You can see even in the standard Dynamic Evo with a mess of cables that I've got going on there because that's a large power supply is still possible. And also this case is still very flexible. I want to say that the standard Dynamic Evo is probably my favorite if you're doing something like I am with an all-in-one cooler and just plenty of fans and aren't doing a custom loop system because it's got plenty of space but still if you put all the fans in even if you're using 120 mil fans it fills up nicely and it looks like it's doing a good job there obviously it still works with larger motherboards and still looks good in there as well and you can buy additional things for it too so because the evo has been knocking around for a while you have a vertical mounting bracket for your gpu as an option you also have a front mesh kit which allows you to put even more fans into the case so you can put another three fans on the front for example as i've done here and then you have an airflow panel that you can put on the front in place of that glass so if airflow is more interesting than the glass panel that you have as standard you can see here then you have that option so you can customize it with your accessories including being able to reposition things like the usb ports as well so highly customizable and then you can end up with a completely different build so you can see these two views of what it could look like as options and that's what i have done and as i said i've done videos on these if you want to find out more all three are great cases i do prefer the evos though they are more flexible and better looking and more customizable but the o11 vision is still a great option you've made it right to the end of the video you brilliant legend you if you've enjoyed it click that subscribe button give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions if you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.